Hey y'all, this is Jason Elgato of the Dark Crystal Conjunction. I just got a package here, and I was super excited because I knew I, my uh, Dark Crystal calendar was coming in. You can see it here. It's a 2019 calendar. I talked about this on the last news update. Nothing too special about this, just 12 scenes from the movie, trying to avoid the glare there. So January through December calendar. Nothing too fancy, nothing... Uh, but I think it would look great on my wall in my office. But I also did not know that this was already in. I did not expect this to come in till next week. I knew it was already out on digital. However, I did not know it was out in the physical form. I'm going to do an unboxing of this. I have not looked through it yet. I am excited about it uh, because there should be some new Dark Crystal artwork. There wasn't very many previews of it. But after I saw some previews, I said, okay, yeah, I'm going to buy that. So let's read this blurb on the back here. The Age of Wonder as you've never seen it before. Since its original release in 1982, Jim Henson's groundbreaking fantasy film The Dark Crystal has captured the minds and imaginations of authors, artists, filmmakers, and fans across the world. With its ambitious world-building and stunning visuals, now return to the world of Thrawn, see the vivid locations, lifelike creatures, and beloved heroes as realized by the collection of uniquely original artistic voices in celebration of one of Jim Henson's most enduring creations. The Dark Crystal Artist Tribute features illustrations from artists, luminaries, and newcomers alike. It goes through a specific list there, including the film's original concept designer, Brian Froud. And here is the list of artists you can see. Some of those names you will recognize. So me won't. So I'm excited for the... Uh, oh, I, I didn't know Perez was in there. Okay, so some of these are new to me as well. I didn't look at this in too much detail. Yeah, when I pre-ordered it, I did get it for $19. Uh, 19 US dollars, that is. It is now back up to uh, $24 on Amazon. And the digital price is... I've seen it anywhere from $21 to $25 as well. Of course, it's US dollar. I will try to avoid glare this time. But um, this is a very high quality... Uh, you know, even just feeling this... The book itself is a very high quality hardback. Everything looks good on it. Arkea does make nice hardback, so Arkea is the publishers who do the comic books currently for them as well. So I'm excited that they did this art book. I don't know all it brings, so let's go ahead and check this out together. I am just gonna get. I usually have my stuff scripted, but I'm just gonna go through this ad lib. So ooh. I don't remember seeing that background art there. That looks new to me. Very nice. Land Strider Journey. Oh, Fizgig looks so cute right there. I mean, he always does, but it's a great rendition of him. This logo is the one that they got from a Creation Myths. That's a Creation Myths Dark Crystal logo. Or, you know, the way they colored it. I recognize that. It's one of my favorite ones. Ooh, we got that Matt Peterson art there in the background of this page there's all the credits the table of contents plenty of people when i put these up i will try to put the artist names with these i'm not going to know all of these right off the bat i said i just said matt peterson i meant david peterson another world another time in the age of wonder this is an over 100 book page as so you can see here, the digital version says it's 101 pages. This one says it's 112 pages. That's the Amazon listing, at least. It is the 21st. It's supposed to come out. Uh, it is 8 inches by 11 inches. There's just a good hand. Well, my hand's pretty big, but there's the book. So, anyways, that beautiful cover. So, I'll, originally when I saw some of the previews for this, I was like, oh, a lot of these are just some of the variant artwork that's on the comic book. So, here you can see... Uh, so this is issue one of the newest Dark Crystal. See, this just came out. But look at this. It's bigger. And it looks beautiful. The, you know, the detail in this looks really good. High quality images. Just like they have on the front of the cover of the comic book. But these are bigger. So that's super exciting. One of the reasons I was looking forward to this was because I haven't collected every single comic that's come out. So I was like, well, at least this way I can get all the, you know, wonderful homepage or uh, cover art. Oh, and that is just an epic piece right there. And I think this says, yeah, the following page. This is a Derek Kurt Kim page. And then the next page is Jonathan Case. So this was actually issues one and two variant covers of The Power of the Dark Crystal, issues one and two. These were variant covers that you, know, you could put them together and you got that. So I didn't get the comic book of this, but I saw this artwork and I was like, this is just incredible. So I'm really happy to see that they have this side by side. 
And look, look how, you know, at first you don't notice the Uru and Skeksis, but there they are. Of course, the Dark Crystal separating them all. Yep, Jonathan Case artwork. You can see his little autograph there. So this is not a familiar piece to me. This looks brand new. I did see this in the preview, uh, but I haven't seen this in any other work. So again, you know, you want to get it? Well, it's only here, it seems. Let's keep turning. Oh, that is adorable artwork by Corey Godby. I'm not going to show you all of this because this is a spoiler to his book, Dark Crystal Tells, which is a really cute little book. Actually, you've already kind of seen the spoiler because you've seen these two guys together. But anyways, he, uh, again, this is another top favorite modern fantasy artist, Corey Godby. He does great stuff. Looks like they got some quotes from the movie, When Single Shines the Triple Sun, so forth and so on. Following page art is by Sass McGledge. Again, sorry if I butchered your name. This looks like new artwork as well. Again, man, these are just beautiful. It's so rad. So, yeah, I, I am seeing this for the first time along with you guys. Next page is by Kimberly Johnson. Yep, that looks new to me, too. I've never seen that. Kimberly Johnson. Oh, the Nebri. Very cute. This is when they first meet in their swamp. They're just chilling. Lance drives them back. And then the next page is Jay Fosgit. Jay Fosgit, of course, would have to draw Fizzgig because their names are so similar. It's a good job, Jay. That is really adorable art. I love the style of art, though. Very cute. Great coloration. Huh, there's the crystal. Yeah, we all know who the real hero of the Dark Crystal is. You think it's Jen? You know, could he have done it without Kira? No. He's really just fumbling and bumbling around like that. And uh, that's funny. So this is, I don't know who this one is by. I'm assuming it'll say on the next page, but man, that is a really cool style. So this has a lot more new artwork than I expected. Very cool. Dig that style. Dig that style. That was by S.W. Vidrari. And the next page is Celia Lowenthal. Really great. There at the Wall of Destiny. Of course, Jen's tripping out. What does that actually mean? This is the part of the Dark Crystal. There's a nice Erskett quote there. Hold her to you, for she is party, as we all are part of each other. Big theme of the whole film right there. The following page art is by Michael Allred, with Josh Bodwell on the left. And art by Holly Meyer is the one on the right. This one in the collab. Oh man, that is rad. It's a great conjunction. This looks very movie poster esque. Got lots of stuff in there. Wow, very cool piece. Oh man, Lyra looks crazy. I mean, yes, she should. She should. She's a crazy old, old wizened lady, right? Wonderful. Yeah, dig all these styles. Man, love that background. Very cool. Another world, another time. Oh, this one, this one's cool. It, it looks like, if I zoom out on this, you can see the edges of this. It looks like an old book or something, like an old children's book from the 80s or something. You can see there all the, the detail it has on the sides. Another world, another time. Yeah, it looks like an old 80s children's book cover. Oh, sketches look crazy. Nice chill uru on the bottom. The official adaptation of Jim Henson's epic fantasy adventure film. I don't know what that's from, or if they're just saying that. Previous page was art by Benjamin Shipper. Very cool. This page here is art by Jorge Corona. Oh, and this is from the coloring book. There you can see the coloring book. I did feature that in a previous news. There is a lot of new artwork in that as well. But there you can see that. This is the one I pointed out, like, Fizzgig is straight tripping on something. You know, if, if you look kind of far away enough, it looks like his eyes are, like, days and stuff but you look closer it's just you know detailed line art so uh, you have to heal the dark crystal no truer words could have been said and heal it he did spoiler alert another great shot that's by him i'm assuming that's in the coloring book as well following pages art by brandon dayton yep and rob watching on this is the one on the right so this this is that format of the see how that's more square from like this last one was the coloring book was a square book, so I'm assuming that's from the coloring book as well. I haven't seen the inside of that, 
but that looks like that and man this is some really great stuff oh yes great job on agra love that she almost her face looks like skull like almost it's very voodoo so and that's the one that lit up that's all it took agra Ah, uh, yes this is santa sauna we'll see on the next one sauna talk let me look it up before I butcher her name. Sana Takeda left. So this is one of my favorite modern pieces of Agra art. She just does amazing backgrounds and her coloring always looks like this. She has her own series called Monstrous. I actually have the Monstrous box back here. But all her artwork is like that. Just that really amazing style. That's really cool that she did the variant covers for Power of the Dark Crystal. Here you can see my Power of the Dark Crystal collection. You can see that's all that same style. That's the skill of Sana there. Really wonderful. So, yes. Awesome piece. This looks like we're in an Agra section. There's lots of Agra. There's more Observatory. This is not Sana. This is a very different style as you can see. Very cool. Very cool. One little pet peeve I always I always have, but it's not a pet peeve. Uh, well, it's just something I look for is if if they drew the little ram, you know, horn kind of sp that spits out from uh, Agra's finger. You know, like she doesn't have it there. Did anyone do it? I'm checking on you. No, no. Look, Agra even has five fingers here. They're crazy. These are obviously artistic interpretations, so we'll just let them be. So that last piece was David Jesus Vignoli. The facing page is art by Alex Shriekman with Lizzie John. And this was one of the stories of the hand, this is the Handmaiden's Tale from uh, How the Gelfling Got Her Wings. I was actually about to do a video on that in the upcoming feature. I promised that when I did the Gelfling video. So this is inside of Creation Myths. It is covered up with some other stuff, so that's really cool. Let me look for that real quick. Okay, if we look at Creation Myths Volume 1 here, there is a section that, oh, I just passed it. That is the Handmaiden's Tale. There it is. So again, we already have this picture, but look how much bigger it is. Coloring even looks a little deeper on it. Very nice. Let's see that you got text over it, you know, how the Gelfling maid got her wings. I think I called it the Maiden's Tale. I just made that up. But yeah, see, so this is much smaller than a comic book. Boom. Very nice. Very happy to have that. I think that is a wonderful piece, and that would look great on my next video as well. Another great conjunction coming up. Anything could happen. Who said that? That was Augur, of course. All right, let's see. Next we got, ooh, more art by Sana Takeda. And then the following page after that will be Alex Shriekman with Lizzie Johns, another, the same artist who, that's the ones who were involved. You can hear, see here. Shriekman and Lizzie John, they did a wonderful job in here. And actually, in the back of this, they talk about how they how they did this style. You know, they used watercolors, and uh, one of the ways they wanted to make it look very otherly. I mean, the artwork in Creation Myths is one of my favorite of all the comics. But let's look. Oh yes, I do not have this comic. I don't even know who that is. That does not look like a Gelfling, but she looks really tough. There's a dark crystal, though, in the crystal castle. Someone fill me in on who that's supposed to be. Oh, yeah, there's that artwork. Jan, Jira Jan, I believe is, is his name. A great legendary Gelfling. Was he legend? Was he true? I think he was true. Yeah, see, look, here's it's here on the back of this. Oh, man, that is awesome. Seeing that whole thing without, like, any text covering it or... Wow, beautiful. Man, I'm so... I'm... Again, I was like, ah, am I going to get this? You know, some of this artwork I can find, whatever. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm already glad I got this. Uh, next page, we're going to have Simone Di Armani, page 36. And then after that, Justin Hilden. So let's look at those. Man, that is just really great. I love, sorry. Um, oh, very cool. Ha! <laughs> look at that fizz gig. So good. So good. Sorry, I'm just kicking out here. I mean, but that's the subtitle of the channel, right? Learning about it nerding out about all things the dark crystal love seeing all the various artistic expressions of this movie oh man the the pilings are so adorable this almost feels um jim henson's fraggle rock to me especially the doozers little workers they're feeding the nebri oh and they're 
Oh, I didn't I didn't notice. This way you gotta look closely, you don't take your time. Nebri nestled up there with Fizz Gig. What warmer blanket is there? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Double spread right there. I, I, I was trying to do Kira's impression. Uh, the way she called an Ebri. I, I can't do it. Sorry, that was that was embarrassing and horrible. Now y'all know. I can't do that. And of course, there's Fizz Gig. Not sure who did that art. Previous page was by Matt Smith. And the next page is by Anne Marcialino. Did I say that right? Sorry, Anne. Ooh, this is a very minimalistic. Uh, this artwork looks like the artwork that's coming out in a future book. The Dark Crystal like, Seek and Find or something like that. That looks like that artwork. This might be our first preview of what's actually inside of it. Huh. Look at that. Sorry, I'm going to just keep pointing out Fizzgig. Does she have a little ram's horn finger? Nope. See, it happens. A lot of people forget. I know a very forgiving person. <laughs> and begin all the same. Big change. Some good, some bad. Notice, too, on these quote pages, they have nice, a nice uh, wraparound on them. Following pages are by Santa Takeda, and art by Sunny Lou will be on the next one. And after that, Ramon Perez. Ah, so we're in Gartham territory now. Look at that. Awesome Gartham there. I, I love her style. She's amazing comic book artist. Oh, just artist, period. No, this is a cool one. I'm not, I'm not seeing this. Yeah, again, this is another variant of the Power of the Dark Crystal. This looks like new artwork to me, though. I've not seen that. Wow, look at that. Oh. When you tell people that life was better in the 80s, sometimes they'll look at you. Man, it, the text is really small. As an 80s child. Mm, can amen that. Ooh, look at that nice, dark, and brooding Gartham. Looks like it's from when they're inside the Gartham pit there in the castle. Very cool. It's Perez, Ramon Perez. There's a lot of comic book art. But this it looks like a new piece to me. Wow, this looks like a wizen type uh, podling. He's looked like he just came out of some spell. Oh, they probably just got uh, he probably just got his juices sucked out of him. <laughs> <laughs> that's sad that's sad extracted feels bad my bad dude I thought you were like some cool powerful podling but no he's got your essence strength Ah, yeah about the time we got some more Erskek art and man is that one rad look at that so good Erskeks are one of my favorite characters there's very little known about them uh, so I really digged on the previous page was Hannah Christensen on the left and Michael Dialinus on the right. The next page is Santa Takeda. Takeda. The following page will be Art Coulomb, Duran Bolet, and Mike Huddleston. The race of mystics came to live in a dream of peace. Their ways were the gentle ways of the natural wizards. There's a narrator there. Oh, oh I think <laughs> I didn't realize this, but I think all of these quotes divide the different sections. So now we're getting into the Uru. Let me check here. No, it doesn't tell you that up in the front. Part 1 Tribute Art. Part two, the Dark Crystal creation myths, Frank Froud stuff, and part three, the Dark Power of the Dark Crystal. Yeah, so it looks like we're in a section now of Uru. Oh, yeah, this was one of the ones I saw in the preview, and I said, okay, that's rad. That is just oh, so good. You know, baby Jen being swept away and taken by his master. So good. It looks so tough. Oh, man. This is great artwork. They've done a, they did a great job with this. They've got some really good artists. Ah, yes, this is a cover of Power. I recognize this cover. Yep. This is also the same as cover number seven, Power of the Dark Crystal. But again, you got it much bigger. And it looks a lot more vibrant. That's not just because of the, the lighting. Put those side by side there. Very nice. Very nice. Fizz gig looks wonderful as always. <laughs> Oh snap. This is the cover to Tells of the Dark Crystal by Corey Godby. Except his book is square, so it cuts off like right probably like right there. Like boom. I didn't even know he had painted this down here. That is really cool. I know he did draw this for the uh let me see right here. For the song of the Dark Crystal. I wonder if that's the same artwork there. He just it looks like it is, huh? We're on to you, Corey. I mean that's totally cool. I mean he drew it all so he could use it. 
Yeah, it looks like he used that artwork and put it down there. That is really rad. This is Song of the Dark Crystal. Corey Godby does the art for the cover. Well, for this cover. Uh, Brian Froud did the art for the last one. For the first one, rather. Uh, but he also does the illustrations on the inside of this, which, you know, I guess there's like, you can see all the black pages there. There's probably like 10 or so. 8 to 10 are done by Corey Godby, who did this cover. Again, look at that. Look at that amazing work. His stuff is outstanding. We're spending lots of time on it. This is new. Very beautiful. Jim playing his flagellette. His double whistle, as some simply say. That old Baroque instrument. With Uru probably chanting by his side. Let's talk a little bit more about that in the novelization. <clears throat> this is new, and this looks new to me as well. It is cut square. I wonder if that was in the coloring book. It doesn't seem like it would be if it's already colored. Very nice. <laughs> he looks very fuzzy there. He just got perm. He just got him like a hair dryer. <laughs> He's very fluffy. That's a one by Sana, actually. This one I thought I had, but I don't have this one. Of all of Sana's variant artwork from Power of the Dark Crystal, the 12 comic book series, I am missing about four of them. To save our world, you must find the shard before the three suns meet. If not, Skeksis rule forever. So now I'm assuming we're getting into Skeksis art. Oh uh, yes, but let's look at who we just looked at. So yeah, page 54 was Corey Godby, then Ashley Lovett. The previous page were Nicole Gustafson, left. Yeah, there's Sana Takeda. As well, and the facing page is art by Lee Garbett, and the following pages are by Ian Herring, and then pages 62, and then the next looks like the next four pages will be Mac Smith. So these are some of the variant covers for Beneath the Dark Crystal, which is the sequel to The Power of the Dark Crystal, which is the sequel to the movie The Dark Crystal. And he does amazing artwork as well. He's a comic book artist. This is a variant cover, these I don't have, but I love how he has these little Little story tells down here, you know, like climbing into the castle there. Very cool, you know. She's got her wings out because she just helped him fl fly down. Very great job. Ooh. It's interesting. Looks very Egyptian hieroglyphic style. Or stained glass window, actually. Now that I take some more time to look at it. Yeah, really cool. Really cool. Uh, there's the great conjunction coming. Oh snap! These oh yeah, I just I just said what's his name again? Max Smith. Now Max Smith does a web comic called Scurry. He also does some stuff for Warhammer and uh, other video games and whatnot. But his Dark Crystal stuff is phenomenal. I first heard about him on the Trial by Stone podcast. He was interviewed. He just did fan art and it was out there on his on his web page. Uh, he didn't get. I assume he got paid for this now. You know, this is many years later. I think I heard this interview, you know, like five years ago or something. Uh, but, man, his stuff, my camera is not going to do justice to how awesome the lighting and textures and everything are on this piece. But, man, it looks really good on this paper. And, yeah, sorry, my camera's just not going to do justice. But this is why you should buy yourself. This is just, so you know, what you're getting. Which I wish I would have known. Uh, but I took the gamble. I took the gamble when I saw that his artwork was in there. His stuff is just phenomenal. I'm so, I'm so happy to see it there. Man, so good. Oh, yeah. Yes. Wow. I mean, even his podlings just look so disturbed. And, I mean, you know, they had the essence sucked out of them, and they're just podling slaves now. Wow. Wow. Look how foreboding he looks. It's so good. So good. Yeah, this is, those alone were worth the price of the book. Mmm. Yeah, you know who that is. Man, his shading, his art, his scurry stuff has wonderful lighting and art as well. But man, I wish just I wish man, if they could commission that guy to do some Dark Crystal covers or the comic, who man, money would be flying off. I would so I'm gonna take all my money. Oh, that's really cool. You see the silhouette of the Skeksis up there up top of that forbidding forest. I also get triple suns there. Very cool. Man, this art is beautiful too. I'm not sure who did this one. There's, yep, there's Fizzgig. You can always, you just gotta keep your eye out for Fizzgig, guys. I'm trying to tell you. 
<laughs> Man, this one. The, the tone has changed drastically on this one. This looks great. His great smirky smile. And there they are. Crystal Bats. After Jen. Again, who's the real hero of the story? No, not you, Fizz Gig. You're just a sidekick to Kira, the real hero of the Dark Crystal. <laughs> That's a really fun one. Really fun one. The colors are very bright in this. The pages are very nice. High quality. Oh, more stuff by him? Yes. Wonderful. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. So good. So good. Yep. You should definitely buy that. Look at that. So sick. Crystal bats fly. You know, just turn the pages and, and read it out. All right, what we got here? The Skeksis with their hard and twisted bodies, their harsh and twisted wills. For a thousand years, they have ruled. So yeah, so that previous art was Jeff Stokey, Gustavo Duarte, Max Smith, more of the pages, wonderful stuff. The next page is Mark Buckingham, and the following page is Dan Mumford. So this one is a cover of Power of the Dark Crystal as well. I know I have that one. I do like that style. Didn't like that the Skeksis returned in it, but uh, he did. There was some great artwork that came out of it. Oh wow! This I don't know if my camera will do it justice, but this almost looks like it's like glow in the dark. I'm gonna press that open. Wow, that is a sick. Yeah, I this is, looks all new art to me as well. There is a lot of new art in this. I'm really impressed. Really thankful. Yeah, this is the final scene of, scene of the Dark Crystal, as you can see. Got the Great Conjunction about to happen, about to jump, Kira's still alive, you got them all meeting up. Oh man, that is wicked. And I say that in the 80s term, since we're talking about 80s stuff. <laughs> Radical, tubular, gnarly. Ooh, wow. That is a really cool style. And of course, going to be coming back to these, I'm trying to appreciate these more. I'm trying to give you guys a quick rundown, but it's really hard because there's a lot of great stuff. Now, that previous page, really rad page, was Hayden Sherman. And next, we have Mike Hutzelson. Mike Huddleson again. This is the uh, cover to the book. He does a great job. His art is phenomenal. So I'm glad to have this too without the uh, logo and stuff on it. At the end there. Very nice. Now we leave you the crystal of truth. Make your world in its light. Ah, uh, you read that and you thought you were going to get nothing but Urskex. Nope. Nope. Now we're moving on to another section. The official prequel to the original film, The Dark Crystal Creation Mystery Graphic Novel Series, was conceptualized by Brian Froud and includes all new characters, including the introduction of Agra's son, Ronip. Oh, very nice. So these are some of the covers. This was the Free Comic Book Day cover that they gave, if I'm recalling correctly. And this was issue number one. As you can see, I already have that laid out here. Again, in here, everything does seem more vibrant. Now this one seems pretty much even or so, but uh, you don't have that all that logo and text and whatnot. Uh, boom. Wonderful. So Brian Froud is, of course, you can't have an art book without Brian Froud. A Dark Crystal art book. Ah, uh, there's his Urskek work. This was Volume 2, the Volume 2 cover is this one. And this is the Volume 3 here. And I love how he always just throws in a random, weird, strange creature. So cool. So cool. Wonderful. The art in the Dark Crystal Creation Myths is wonderful. Not just the covers by Brian Froud, but also the rest by Shriekman and Lizzie John. And then Power of the Dark Crystal, the official sequel to the original film, the Power of the Dark Crystal graphic novel series, introduces all new race, an all-new race of creatures called Firelings that live in the realm near the planet's core, based on official character design by Brian Froud. The following art pages are by Jay Lee with June Chung. And then you have Kelly and Nicole Matthews, who did the interior art of the Power of the Dark Crystal series, the ones who did the inside art there. That's that. Lee Chung, which he's... Uh, very famous comic book cover artist. That's also the cover of the graphic novel, the hardback. There's the Matthews twins there. They they are masters really at color, bringing out color vibrancy, which is one of 
that was one of my favorite parts of the Power of the Dark Crystal comics, the inside, uh, how vibrant and bursting forth those colors were. It's good. Yeah, these are variant colors. I have these as well, I know. Yeah, see, you can see my variant covers here. They're covered with the plastic, but again, you get a much bigger. You don't get that text in the front. Very, very nice. And again, those Matthews twins, they just do such a great job with their lighting. Uh, for not, oh, wow, I never, until I saw this, because this is, you know, the top's mostly covered with text. You know, how, how wonderful the stars and the night looks up, up there on top. Very great. This is one of the great things about getting these art books. Today, all of Thra shall become enmeshed in the Firelings' fate. Again, the previous pages, as I said, art by Kelly and Nicole Matthews. They're twins facing page Jay Lee and Jay Jun Chung. The following pages, Mike Huddleston. So yeah, this is volume two. It's the cover of Power of the Dark Crystal. Very cool. Oh man. Yeah, that fizz gig looks insane. Looks like he looks he looks scary. Let's keep this going. My battery's about to die. Yep, more covers from there. I have all of these. These are really good. Wow, how how ironic is this? Jen sitting atop a Gartham. What's wrong with that picture? Ah, that's part of the story. Only a sliver of the great light, the great power from the outer sphere, can reignite the inner fire. That, of course, is from the Firelings, the issue they're dealing with there. And these are more covers from there. Facing page, Mark Buckingham. Following pages, Benjamin Dewey. And then on the right will be Jay Lee and Jim Chunk. Yep, these are more variant covers that I was never able to get. Looks really cool. This, of course, is Old Man Jen and Old Man Kira. They look a little zombified, a little creepy there. So, but really great stuff. Really great stuff as well. Oh man, so good. This one I don't think I've ever seen. I'm sure this was a variant that I just never got around to getting, but man, that is sick. There's a reason he does a lot of comic book covers. Yep, these are more variant covers here. That's Peterson. And yes, this is the same Peterson that does all of these that I so boast about. This is a kind of different style to him. Really good. More covers. I've seen these. Man, Jim looks old there. He is old. Yeah, previous page was art David Peterson, and then art by Jay Lee. I mean, once you see his style, you know who he is. Again, next page is Mike Cuddleson. Following page, Sana Takeda. When the mind isn't clear, listen to the heart. Never forget that both are parts of the whole. That was a, again, Firelink Mother quote. I think also Kensho's mom said the same thing. So, quotes from Power of the Dark Crystal. And yeah, these are these are really great. Again, I have these, but as you can see, they're they're smaller, so they're they're bigger in this book. And yeah, again, they they just look much more vibrant. And man, that is wonderful stuff. Old man Jan. An old man, old woman, Kira. And then here, it closes out with about the artist. So lots of bios there. We're going to have multiple pages of this. Yeah, so I would definitely say this is well worth your $20 or whatever you find it at. So here's some more stuff upcoming from them. Mouse Guard. That's one of the artists. Oh, a lot of these artists that have their stuff on here. So very cool. This is... I thought this might have some of the art from the old mangas, but they do not. Uh, I might I might feature those one day because those are out of print. You can't get those anymore, and they don't talk about those at all. Uh, so I, I think I will just make a video of some of the artwork they had there because they had guest artwork at the end of the graphic novels as well. Some really cool stuff by some of these same artists here. So again, here was your first unboxing there of Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal Artist Tribute. I give this two thumbs up, but I'm holding the camera, so I can only give it one right now. All right, we all enjoy this book and keep exploring through.